Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I'm back with take, I guess takes two and three to create my Hanukkah colorway. I want to create something that is inspired by the melted wax that I see on my tray after the eight nights of Hanukkah. So sort of a mixture of colors and sometimes they swirl together, sometimes you have these rivers of color. And I really want to focus on the three primary colors. My first attempt was a little more of like an evil rainbow fairy, which was beautiful, just not, it was like a little more mysterious than the colors that I am hoping to achieve. So, I, but I haven't really given up on that speckled idea, so I want to try two different ways to play around with this and see if um, I can achieve the colorway that is in my head. I started with a 20 pack of Knit Picks Felici yarn. This yarn is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. I need to dye at least 13 skeins in this colorway. So um, I still, and I've used three already, so I have 17 left. So I can still play around a little bit before, I mean, I guess we're on plan B and plan A.2 and before I guess I need to go to plan C. So let's start and try two different ways to layer these primary colors on top of each other and then I'll see which I like better. In this pot I have 16 cups of water. I'm going to add four tablespoons of white vinegar, approximately. My plan B is to dye a twisted hank of yarn three times in the pot. Um, and I think that we're going to start with yellow, and then we're going to add some red, and then finally we're going to add some blue on top of all of that. But in between each dye step, we will um, open up the yarn, let it cool, and then retwist it. At the same time, I am pre-soaking another skein of Felici with an extra tie, since they only come with one, in 16 cups of water plus four tablespoons of white vinegar. Because I want to try the uh, hand painting with dry powder one more time using a lot more restraint. Uh, <laughs> so fingers crossed. To do the twisted skein, I want to do it loosely. I'm gonna take two ends, sort of twist it up, if I was skating it, then I might do a few more twists, but I want it to still feel fluffy um, because if it's too tight, then you're going to end up with too much of the yarn that has white on it. And then I'm letting it twist up, pop one end in the other, and now we have a very loosely twisted skein right here. Um, so, you know, it's, it's loose, you can get some fibers pulled. I chose to put, at least for the first one, the two ties in the middle versus having them both up at the end. But now, once our dye bath has heated up, we can start dyeing. Yesterday, I mixed some approximately 1% stock solutions. And as they cooled off, can you tell that one of them is crashing out a solution a little bit? The three colors are Dharma Acid Dyes in Brilliant Yellow, Fire Engine Red, and Peacock Blue. When I mixed these, I used five grams of the Dharma Acid dye, and I dissolved it in 500 milliliters of water. Some of the dyes, and actually it was the red and the yellow, had some chunks that didn't dissolve well, so I filtered all three of them through a paper towel to remove the chunks to hopefully give me a little more consistency as I move from the jars to the dye pot. And in a live stream that got interrupted when YouTube went down, I did take this and um, I played around with them a bit to do some semi-solids to get a sense of their potency. And I found that the yellow at the same, I guess, concentration of these mixtures, the yellow was a lot brighter than the red, which looked pink, and the blue. So with the one skein of yarn that I'm going to dye right now, I'm going to use one tablespoon of the yellow, uh, two tablespoons of red, and two tablespoons of blue. And I'm going to go in that order. 
Okay. I'm gonna sort of stir up the jar. And there are approximately, or maybe exactly, four tablespoons in one quarter cup. Uh, just for some reference. But here is just one tablespoon of that yellow dye. It is going to look like there's not a ton of color in here. And there really isn't. Uh, but there is a lot of water because I wanted to give the color um, some chance to hit the yarn and get a little bit of a sense of the proportions. If I was dyeing three or four skeins at a time, then I would be using more dye because I'm planning to let all of the dye absorb to our dry friend here. And we ready? Let's go. I am gonna need to use my tongs to push our friend in um, because we are dry. But I think of all of the colors that I tested last night, the yellow actually absorbed the slowest. Um, I found that, uh-oh, we might be coming out of the twist a bit. I found that the blue and the red struck faster. And oh dear, my twist is coming undone. Um, therefore, I am I'm going to push that a tiny bit, but I'm not going to push this anymore. <laughs> um, I am going to reduce the heat a bit, and I'm going to let this stay because I'd like there to still be some resist in it. Um, but that is, I guess, a note of caution for myself as well. It's going to take a little longer for the color to absorb um, because not the dye doesn't have access to all of the color. Um, there's still a bit left, so I'm going to go ahead and set a timer for five minutes, and then we'll come back. I will admit I did poke it a tiny bit um, just to see what kind of color was left, and it did not clear, and we've got a nice bright, bright yellow. Um, and our skein, I'm trying to let as much of the dye as possible drip out because I want this to cool quickly so I can retwist it. We do have a lot of white behind. When this cools, I'll be able to order it a little more properly so we can see how the yellow coverage went. But I want to be able to reuse this dye bath. And we still got color in there. So what are we going to do? I've got some dry, untwisted, stroll fingering weight yarn, which is going to be our mop for everything today. And I am popping it in uh, to help us soak up that extra color. Do, do, do. And we will be using this with some of the other dyes as needed today as well. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I could go and switch out the dye bath, but since I have the yarn, why not uh, soak up the color in a nice, fun way? And after not even a minute, the dye bath is clear. So I'm gonna leave the heat on low, set, oh dear. Set the stroll yarn aside until maybe we'll need it again. Um, but I'm going to cover this so we don't lose actually. First, I'm going to wipe the edge. Sometimes there can be some dye around the outside edge of the pot, but not really a ton or anything this time. But I am going to cover up the pot just so that way we don't lose too much volume and then once our tester yarn cools enough we will try to uh, reskein it for the next color all right this has cooled off enough that I can handle it so the first thing I want to do is squeeze out some of that extra liquid into our pot um, to have it be a little bit drier. Okay, but I'm twisting it a little differently because I want some of the white to be on the outside. Um, there we go. 
top the end in. And then, okay, this time I've twisted it a little bit tighter, but you can see now um, that we've got some exposure of the yellow, but also a lot of exposure of the white. Initially, I thought that I was going to add two tablespoons of the red, but I decided to pull that back a bit. If I think I need more color, I can always add a second tablespoon, but I don't want to overload this too much. So there is one tablespoon of our red color. And I want to stir this up. There were, it looked like there were a couple clumps, but most of those, and just being in the boiling water, have dissolved. All right, and now let's add in our yarn. And so this time, it sort of sunk down right away. Um, and you can see that we're picking up some nice pink hues already. But I am going to leave this in here for five minutes and then we'll see how it's doing. Five minutes are up and we've got some really nice deep pinks and reds showing through. Um, there's a hint of orange. Well, I guess I'm a little too high. I'm letting some of this water drip off. There is a hint of some orange, but overall I think this red dominated the yellow. And unlike when um, I was doing this as a semi-solid, we totally, totally see more red than pink. Um, but still really hot. I do want to try to open this up so you can see the way that these colors are layering on top of each other. Um, but we've got a lot of red and yellow in here. Now I'm gonna set this aside so that way it can cool off a bit. And oh no, oh no, we've got some leftover color. I'm going to slowly dip from one end into this leftover color. And then we will do this with the other end, maybe in the blue, or we shall see. Yeah, because if I add this last bit in, there's not very much, aha, uh -huh, we've got a hint of pink left. But most of this leftover color is in the yarn. And so what I'm doing now is a way that I like to help remove some excess water just by literally wrapping the yarn around my tongs. But I'm gonna set this aside so it can cool again. And once we can twist the other yarn back up, in about 10 minutes, uh, we'll start dyeing the blue. All right, once again, we're gonna take our yarn and squeeze out some of that excess water back into our pot. Um, that will make it a little easier to twist up. And now I can see some points where there are more white. And so my aim is to try to have, yeah, try to position this so that way that white ends up on the outside. Sometimes you just need to stop thinking about it too much and just sort of go for it. Okay, we have a lot of yellow showing. Um, I do have some sections of white, and you can see I'm like repositioning it, repositioning it a little bit. But here we go for round three. Okay, the pot is still very hot. Now, of all the colors, the blue is the gloppiest. You can definitely heat up your stock solutions before 
you start dying. So I could probably put this in like inside the hot water to try to heat things up. Um, but I'm going to hope for some consistency. And if this ends up being the technique that I do for the multiple skeins, what I would do for the blue is pre-dissolve some of this and make like a secondary stock solution. Um, so that way I can try to keep things as consistent as possible. But we're gonna stir this up. It looks like everything is happy and dissolved straight away. All right, you guys ready for this? Let's add our yarn. Okay, we're adding on the blue. You can see some hints of it come in. Alrighty, but now I am gonna set a timer for five minutes. I'm gonna keep an eye on the heat um, because you know it'll heat up close to a boil, but I don't wanna get a super rolling boil. But then we will come back in five minutes and check on our yarn. Five minutes are up and let's take a look at our yarn. We've got some great blue. I would like a little bit more, so I'm actually going to leave it in a little bit longer, I think. I'm going to go ahead and leave it in for five more minutes. I am not sure if a lot more color bound in those additional five minutes. Um, Maybe some did, but now I am removing this and I am going to set it aside so then we can open it up and see how this colorway is doing. But I have to say I'm very excited that by layering these three colors on top of one another, I'm not seeing brown. Um, so woohoo! Let's go ahead and soak up some of this leftover blue with my super, super hot of stroll. I was going to hold it from the opposite end that I did before, but I do sort of want to preserve a little bit of yellow. So I have rotated it um, with a lot of like this pink at the bottom to dip in this way. There's not a lot of blue left, just a tiny bit, but we are dipping slowly to preserve some of these original colors. That is almost clear. Yeah, I don't even think I want to dip this top end in. Now granted, at this stage, I am basically done dyeing this sample yarn, but why not go ahead and use up and let's not leave any of the dye behind. So our pot is clear. I'm going to place this in a bowl to cool off and let's go reveal our yarn. All right, here is our plan B. Um, I would say that right now, this is beautiful. I love the way that this is looking and I'm definitely seeing um, blue, green, yellow, a little bit of purple, and we are hot. <laughs> um, do take care when you are dealing with yarn that is fresh out of the dye pot, but <laughs> here is the yarn and this is beautiful it is rainbowish without being overt there is some white left and this is good um, you almost even see some glazing of some of the tones because in here I see blue I see yellow and bits of white um, I'm gonna let this cool off and then we'll squeeze out some water and take a closer look at what this colorway did. But as far as plan B's go, I've now nailed the depths of color that I was hoping to get using the other technique. I mean, seriously, look at that next to this box of candles. 
All right, I am gloved and glasses back up. What I need to remember today is that less is more. And that's probably a bit more than, than I will need, but when I did the, the twisted skein three times, um, I ended up using about 0.6 grams of dye of each color. So I don't need a lot. And if I use a lot, I do not need a lot of dye. And if I use too much, then you start getting into the evil fairy territory. And that is one that I would like to avoid this time. So I'm going to, I'm taking out this little bit of dye. I didn't weigh them. Uh, maybe I should weigh them, but we are going to attempt to keep this a bit more low key. I think I have a little too much red, but yeah, let's, let's go about this with a less is more type application. Less is more, Rebecca. Just tap out some of this dye into my hand and add on little bits uh, of the dye, letting it uh, not be as, you know, the last time I was very, very liberal with all of the colors. And this time I'm going more for sort of like a speckling almost. And of course I've got the dye all over my hands. <laughs> it's hard because it does sort of stick to the gloves a bit. I think I went heavy with my dye application last time because I sort of wanted to make sure it penetrated through a few layers. And I'm not sure if that is going to happen this way. But stuff did spread out a lot. So Okay, let's leave that for the other side. I'm going to go rinse off the powder from my gloves, which does end up feeling quite wasteful. But I see some good, like, yellow hints coming through. Okay, drying it off with this paper towel. And now let's do some red. And again, I'm going way lighter this time. Um, this is more speckly than dumping. Last time there was just so much dye that the colors were so unbelievably saturated. And the individual colors will likely be pretty dark on here, but with less overall dye, uh, we may not end up with the, like, mess that we saw before. So, we shall see. Hopefully we don't end up with too much, like, white space left behind. I'm not expecting these colors to penetrate very far, but I am sort of attempting to get, like, these edges a little bit here but yes that is a significantly lighter application this time compared to the last one okay let's get these last little rubbies off and the nice thing about using less dye is that it shouldn't take as long to soak in um, all right, now for the blue. Um, I don't know if any of the rest of you have kids, but whenever I'm playing with these colors, OK Go has a song that they did for Sesame Street that's the three primary colors. <laughs> And so I have had that stuck in my head uh, as I've been playing with these colors the last couple days. So 
Uh, if you have not seen that, that video before, I highly recommend that you check it out. <laughs> Again, I'm trying to get, make sure I get to these edges. And we've definitely got some fine speckles, but some bigger splotches as well. So, what concerned me last time was just like how dark the blue and the red looked. So, um, we will, we will see, but I think that I have successfully done a much lighter application of the dyes this time around. Um, and I think that taking out less to begin with also helped. I am going to let this sit, um, for about five minutes before I flip it over just to give some of the colors a chance to get wet and sort of sink into the fiber. With the pre-soaked yarn, um, I made sure that there was still a fair amount of liquid in there. Uh, and yeah, this is looking really, really nice. Okay, I'll come back in five minutes. Okay, five minutes later, and the blues are looking more blue than navy to me, so that is good. I am curious about the penetration, and it's definitely not going, I think it's going through maybe more than one level, but not like a ton more. Um, but let's flip the yarn. Flip it over and try to expose as much of the other side as we reasonably can. It's hard because the Felici is sort of like a smaller width skein than some of the other yarns that I that I dye, but we will do our best. Um, and in the flipping process, I really should get I need like a wool piece of cloth to wet my hands on. Too bad this would not work on a cotton hanky. All right, let's go back for the yellow again. And again, the goal is restraint. If I'm going to be a little less restrained in a region, it should be around where the ties are located. So that way we can penetrate a bit further. Oh. But the application is light and now I hope I'm not blocking it but I'm sort of just since I can't really grab it out of the cup I am using this to sort of lightly add some color on, sort of brushing it out. And by tapping the cup, I can get some on here, but also get myself a little more powder that I spread out. I've had people ask me, you know, why don't you use a salt shaker or, you know, various other types of um, paraphernalia, and you absolutely could. I think that cutting this dye with citric acid could be very uh, beneficial and would be very handy as well. Um, I think that that could be a nice way to get things done. But I'm actually going through, and these aren't going to be speckles now, but I'm going through, since I've got all this dye in my hands, and sort of tapping <laughs> the yarn in spots uh, to add a little more color, especially in some of these areas where I know that coverage may not be the best, but I figure I got the dye on my hands, why not uh, take advantage of that? <laughs> Drying off my hands, 
Now, I do not want to use up all of the red that I have here. I took more red out of the container than I really need. Um, so on one hand, it's a plus because I can grab it to speckle with my fingers. Um, because I like like being able to rub my fingers together to get lighter or heavier sort of dots of the color. Uh, I find that to be uh, very tactile. But again, for some people they might prefer to use some kind of dusting wand or spoon. I think it ultimately comes down to your personal preference. Uh, and again, I'm going for something fairly light. And then again, I'm now looking to see if I see any semi-whitish patches and I'm lightly tapping my finger um, to add just a little bit more color. But it actually looks like I'm getting reasonable color penetration throughout. So I am happy about that. As far as techniques go, here with plan, but I guess this is plan A part two, more restrained, and then with plan B, they are both fairly labor intensive techniques in that you're handling each skein multiple times. But I do really enjoy the process. Oops, I may have gotten some blue into my red as I'm going with the powder. It's funny, I think in terms of like powder and speckles, the yellow is the least like intense because it spreads out a bit more, but the blue and red, like the powders have a little more of a punch, if that makes sense. Um, The tapping of the cup only really works if there's not a ton of dye left in it. And then you can go through and tap. I am definitely okay with there being white left behind. It's just, aha, these like big areas of white are what I am trying to prevent a bit is why I am now moving things around a bit more this time, whereas last time I let the colors set a little bit more first. Um, and you can sort of wipe off color off of the ground and add that back in with your fingers. But now, okay, I'm actually really happy with this. I am gonna let this sit for five minutes and then we are going to steam it. And hopefully this time around, I did not overdo the amount of dye. Got my tongs. We're now going to pick up our pretty, pretty yarn. Hold it over a container so I don't accidentally fling dye anywhere. And go put it in our steamer basket. Okay. Turn up the heat on the good old steam basket. But let's go ahead and steam this for 30 minutes to set the color. Now granted, this is different from the first time around that I tried this technique with uh, less restraint in that I'm using the shallower steamer basket versus the pasta pot, which goes lower um, and can have a bit more moisture in there. So the results will be a little different because also the yarn isn't as packed in, but let's go for it. But what about the dye on the counter? If I did not think that this yarn was so lovely in its own right, I would want to take it to mop up some of that color, but I cannot bring myself to do that. 
Uh, so I will be wiping this up with paper towels. I know, I know. It has been 30 minutes, and let's remove. And voila! This actually looks pretty close to the way it did at the beginning. We do have some darker patches down at the bottom where the colors have run together. And we might see some bleeding when we wash it, but I am not sure. Um, it does seem like if there's like a lot of liquid that the colors will sort of concentrate at the bottom, but this is ultimately really, really beautiful. And as a point of reference, I do not see any color coming out beneath the surface. And we did see color come out the bottom when we did this the first time around. So now I am going to let our yarn cool a bit and then let's go talk about the two choices and decide on the Hanukkah colorway. All right, here are the two skeins of yarn. We've got the one that we did the twisted hank three times, and we've got a lot bigger splotches of the colors, but you can really kind of see the colors all very nice and clearly. It actually makes me think a little bit of a parrot with the way that these colors come together. The speckled one is beautiful and still warm. Um, it's possible that there could be some bleeding when I wash either of these. This one I'm more worried about. Overall, the colors I think are more blended, but we still don't have something that looks brown. And honestly, either of these could work for my inspiration. Uh, whether I go with plan B or plan A take two. I think that looking at them from far away, plan B looks brighter and a little sunnier. And this one is stunning and definitely feels a little bit like melted wax, but some of the specks are a little too speckied. Um, I wish that they had spread a little more, sort of like when I do the tie-dye powder, um, in, in just for the inspiration that I was going for. So I think that looking at my box of candles and thinking about the rivers of the wax, I am going to go with the Plan B for the limited edition Chemnitz Hanukkah 2018 colorway. Don't worry, I love, love, love this technique and will absolutely be playing with it a lot more in the future. And zooming in, these colors are happy. It's still because of the, even with using the less dye, there is a darkness to it. And I want the colorway, this colorway to have a brighter feel. And I mean, the colors over here sort of nailed it based on this uh, cheap box of Hanukkah candles I picked up. First, let's wash our sample colorway. The one that was the winner. And I am not seeing any bleeding here at all. Hooray! Given that I'm going to be doing a dozen more of these, um, I'm adding a little bit of dish soap just to see if that causes any colors to come out. And I think that we are pretty good, actually. Up. All right, I'm now seeing a hint of pink, which uh, so far in my experience using this Dharma Fire Red, I do get a little bit of bleeding. And this is why I do recommend with any bright color, can dyed yarns, wash them on their own for the first few washes. But all things considered, that is not a lot of bleeding. But oof. I am really, really excited um, to see the way that these colors just run together. And so now I'm going to go and hang this up to dry and we are going to wash our speckled friend. All right, let's dip this in and at the first look, it's looking pretty good to be honest. 
I might see a hint of pink, but um, it does not look like we're seeing significant bleeding, which is a very, very good thing. The last time, uh, you'll remember, there was a fair amount of bleeding that happened. Uh, but yeah, that is just a hint of pink. I'm being a little careful about leaving this yarn in the water because I would like to preserve some of the white behind. Whereas last time, the white picked up some of the dye that was bleeding out. And a little bit of dish soap. Yeah, seeing a little bit of pink. But this is nothing like what we did with our, with the evil fairy version of this color wedge. Um, I, I love that you see so many colors, but even where they all sort of ran together a little bit, it is not looking brown, um, which is very exciting because when you mix so many colors together, you definitely could get brown. But that water is looking clear, so I'm now going to go hang this up to dry, and then I will come back um, to show what these finished dry yarns look like. Well, hello, Melted Wax. I did not actually go and hang you up to dry because I wanted to hang on to you as a color reference. If you would like to see me dye a dozen more of this colorway, uh, stay tuned. Um, there will be another time-lapse video where you can watch the speed up dyeing of 12 more skeins in this colorway. Today, we dyed two very different yet equally stunning colorways using primary colors and layering these colors on top of one another. And in neither case did we end up with a muddy brown. In fact, we have these happy rainbow colorways where one is more splotched and the other is more speckled. Both of these go really well with the inspiration of some Hanukkah candles, but and now I need to pick all the candles up off the yarn. Um, but this one, I think, fits my melted wax inspiration and the pools of colors that mix together as the wax drips off of the Hanukkah uh, menorah. And I'm going to flip these over so you can see the other side. Um, both of these are very random and are non-repeating colorways. Um, you might see some limited pooling with this one, but um, the colorway overall could also be pretty asymmetric. And ultimately, a whole lot of fun. While dyeing our twisted hank of yarn three times, we used a spare skein of stroll fingering weight yarn to help soak up the dye from the dye pot uh, in between batches. So that way I could have the dye always be a primary color and we could reuse the water um, between each twist as we layered the colors on top of each other. And we've got this almost pastel rainbow. It's really missing some blue, but we definitely have green, yellow, orange, pink, and purple in there. And I think that this is a beautiful colorway on its own right. And it's always fun when you can create something so beautiful using dye that is sort of an afterthought. And so this fits very nicely into my leave no dye behind mentality. And actually, there's a whole playlist on videos like that as well. I'll put a link to it in the video description. What a difference a little restraint can make. I was able to achieve the layered speckled colorway that I was aiming for in this week's Dye Pot Weekly, where we got our nice evil fairy colors by really holding back and using a lot less dye. And the coverage on this yarn is fantastic. There's white left, but there's a lot of layering of color, and I think that you know, this is what my original vision was when I set out to create the evil fairy. 
But this was a happy accident for a few reasons. One, I think that this evil fairy color is stunning in its own right. And two, the plan B idea ended up fitting the vision for the feeling that I wanted to evoke with this yarn a little better. And so this is why sometimes it's really worth going and trying a couple things when you have an inspiration in mind because uh, while your idea might really work with the inspiration, your second idea could work even better. And so it's always fun to try a lot of variations on one theme. I dyed the final colorway in three batches of four using the same stock solutions that I mixed in this video. I think things are fairly consistent across the three batches. From skein to skein, there really are not dye lots here because depending on how things were twisted in each of the three different steps, that really can alter the amount of color blending, color mixing, how much or how intense the different colors are on the skeins. So I think that you know, the batch number doesn't matter as much as the individual skein because I think that the depths of all the colors are consistent across. I used the exact same color proportions here as I did for the yarn that we dyed in this video. I think that the overall colors on these final 12 are a bit more intense and that it is looking like there's a difference between having one tablespoon of dye with one skein of yarn and having a quarter cup, which is four tablespoons, of dye with four skeins of yarn. I think that having the dye more concentrated can alter a little bit the color intensity, but overall the quote flavor of these yarns feels the same. And given that this was done on a separate day, maybe I wasn't twisting as tightly or twisting tighter. And so there's a lot of variables when you go into this kind of technique. But if I lay the one that we did today in with the rest, it fits in pretty nicely. There might be a tad bit more white in the original, but I still am really happy with these results. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I hope that you enjoyed this video where I finalized the colorway that I wanted to create for the 2018 limited edition Chemnitz Hanukkah colorway. I especially hope that you have enjoyed the entire journey of the Hanukkah special, where I have now done nine different dyeing techniques on nine different yarn bases with a few bonus techniques scat and bases scattered around in there. Make sure you check out the Hanukkah playlist uh, so that way you can go back and see the episodes that you may have missed. And if you liked this video, subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel and give the video a thumbs up while you're at it. Stay tuned for a fun time-lapse video where I will die 12 skeins of yarn in this colorway. Thank you so much for watching.